Well, hello everyone and welcome to part 5 of this tutorial. So, in parts 1 through 4 we created our different parts, we assembled our model and we defined contact and interactions between them and also created uh, steps and specific field output requests. Okay, so in this uh, part is we are going to um, define boundary conditions and loads and also mesh our model and then we are going to create a job and hopefully it will run and we can have a look at some results. Okay, so to start off then, we are going to define boundary conditions to the assembly. So with regards to the boundary conditions, we are going to fix um, the face of the hold hinge at that end over there. Um, and also we are going to create uh, no slip boundary conditions that constrains the pin while contact is established in the first step so the pin is not supposed to move and then we are also going to apply um, a boundary condition called constrain which will constrain all degrees of freedom of a point on the solid inch piece the one without the hole during the first analysis step and then we're also going to add a load um, in the form of a pressure to the end of one of the hinges to actually um, pull this uh, assembly apart. Okay, so first things first, we're going to apply uh, a fixed boundary condition to the uh, hinge with the hole. So when we go down to boundary conditions, BC, we can double click to create a boundary condition. We are going to call this fixed because we're going to fix the end. It's going to be a uh, occur in the initial step. So as a rule, your um, support conditions are defined or specified in the initial steps, always in your initial step because that defines the model before the loading is applied. And we're going to say mechanical, and we are going to say displacement rotation. Oh, not velocity, displacement rotation, and we are going to say continue. Then it asks for a region. We don't have a region specified or created for this yet, so just to get to that face, I'm going to rotate my model slightly and escape, and I'm going to select this face. Hey, sorry, we need to say select in viewport. Sorry, there, now we can select hmm, why can't I select can select a point but why can't I select the entire face maybe we should toggle closer to the screen ah now we can select an entity to that let me just rotate this a little bit to don't see everything and put that off now we can't select it to it off vertices are oh, I only want to select a face uh, you don't want both faces though hmm Maybe I should rotate it so I can just select that face. Let's see now. Escape. And it selects both faces. That edge, that edge. Hmm. How do I just select the one face? Let's just say closest boom there we go now sometimes it takes a little bit of playing around getting the uh, the right stuff so that's our face and we say done and now it asks us what do we want to constrain definitely our three displacements we are not going to be worried about the rotations in this example so we can just say okay and now oh, that face is restrained. 
Okay, perfect. That's our first boundary condition. Now let's just escape this, move a bit down and see. Next, what I said we want to do is we want to constrain the pin. Okay, so now we're going to create another boundary condition. It's going to be named no slip. No slip. And it's again going to be in the initial step, mechanical and displacement rotation, and we say continue. Now in this case, we are going to constrain that reference point. So we're not going to select by faces, we want to go select reference points. And there's our reference point. So what we're going to do, we're literally going to constrain the spin to that reference point that we've created. And I'm going to click Done. Now what we're going to constrain everything on that point so the pin is held firmly in place during the initial step. Okay, now we can see our two boundary conditions have been created. The next step is now we want to modify if we want to modify boundary conditions so we can go bound BC's open manager and this dialog pops up it says fix the no slip contact in the initial step contact step and the loading step but we don't want the pin to be constrained in the load step if I'm not mistaken so where it's load in the no slip we are going to select that one I'm going to say edit and now we are allowed to edit the boundary condition specifically under the load step so we're going to turn off the U1 and UR1 so we're going to unconstrain the displacement in the X direction, so the pin can move in the X direction and it can also rotate about the X axis. But sorry, that makes a little bit not sense. We want to actually allow it to rotate about the Y axis. So this whole assembly can rotate about the Y axis and the pin can move in the X, in the X direction. Okay, and that's pretty much it. I'm going to say modify to let us know that we actually changed the boundary condition for the load step and that's it. Now we can just say dismiss. Okay, the next step we want to do is we want to constrain the inch piece without the hole. So just to see it is this little guy over here. Let me just get my rotation right. Okay, so not this one, this one we want to constrain get my rotation out of the way so now we're going to create a displacement boundary condition create a boundary condition let's call it constraint constraint it's going to be in the initial step as I said boundary conditions usually happen in the initial initial step mechanical displacement continue it asks us for regions I don't want reference points I want Attach points, no, let's say vertices, no, edges, no, where's all? Because I want points, there we go, now the points pop up. I want to constrain that point over there, the top point, and I want to, in the initial step, I want to constrain that in the in all three directions so that thing that point is held in place okay now again we're going to modify it so go to the manager go to constrain in the load step we want to modify it edit and the one direction we want to unconstrain it so this point can then again move in the one direction Recall that we did put a um, degree of freedom monitor on that point earlier on to monitor the degree of freedom at that point. So for that we actually need to 
well, unconstrained during the load step, so you can actually see that that point moves. Okay. Now, the next step uh, would be to apply load. So just to recap, we've applied a fixed boundary condition on that face. We constrained that uh, edge or point in this hinge, and we also added a no slip constraint to the pin during the um, initial steps and modified it for the load step. So the, when the loading is applied and the boundary conditions met and contact established, the, the pin does not move. Okay, the next point would be to apply our load to the solid hinge. So we would then go to loads, double click on loads. It will obviously occur in the load step. We'll just call it pressure, not pursue, pursue, whatever I wrote there. Pressure, call it a pressure. And click continue. Select the surface for the load. It will be that point over there. Click done. And then the edit load dialog pops up. And we want to pull it on that end. So the magnitude is going to be minus 1.0 times 10 to the power of 6. So we said negative, then it pulls away from the surface we apply it to. So you can see the arrows also indicate that it's pulling away. Okay, so now our boundary conditions are applied, our loading is applied. If you want to apply different loads, you would just, well, do the same as we did now. You can apply concentrated forces and moments and other types of load as well. Maybe it's also a good idea to just save where we are. Okay, so the next step is going to be meshing the assembly. So we can subdivide meshing of this uh, assembly in a few steps. First, we'll just make sure our part instances can be meshed and we can create additional partitions if you want to control the mesh uh, a little bit, if we want node to certain places and so forth. And we can si assign mesh attributes, seed the parts and mesh the parts as we are well familiar with. Just a quick side note if, if we want to decide what needs to be partition. If you want to, if you go to meshing, Abacus color codes region of the model according to methods used to generate a mesh. So you can go to meshing. Okay, so when you double click on an elements or parts mesh, the it's color coded. So when Abacus color codes um, parts, it the color indicates three things. Green indicates that a region can be meshed using structured methods. Yellow indicates region can be meshed using sweep methods. And if it's orange, like we have this bit, it indicates that a region cannot be meshed, meshed using um, the default element type assignment, which is hexahedral elements, and must be partitioned further. Or you can mesh any model by assigning tetrahedral or that triangle elements to the model using free meshing techniques. Just gives you some sort of control as to what you want to mesh and how. Okay, so that's just what the colors mean. Okay, now we need to actually go for it, but a quick side note, um, what I've picked up in my Abacus installation. If you go to view and you go to toolbars, you can s uh, select to put the views toolbar on and maybe dock it somewhere. I'm going to move it a bit to that end. What this does is you can actually then just rotate your view according to what you want to see. And it's just nice to actually be able to do that quickly and easily. Okay, so now based on this we can see that hinge needs um, partitioning at the orange bit. Uh, if we go to the hinge solid we can see that's perfectly fine. This needs to be meshed with sweep mesh methods and the pin, just to show that as well, the pin is just orange so that can also, well also needs to be partitioned a bit further. Okay, so let's go to the first part, hinge hole, and we click, uh, double click mesh, sorry, mesh. So expand this a bit further so it fit, fits in nicely. Okay, so, okay, so now we know this is orange, so we need to partition this bit to 
get it to be meshed properly or we can use the uh, loose or the fancy mesh tools or abacus then just for uh, completion sake we are going to partition this bit a bit further so we're going to go to multi partition we're going to go to tools partition and then the create partition box appears and from that we're going to go uh, so we're going to partition cell and from there we're going to say define cutting plane and then it asks select the cells to partition and we are going to select the flanger of the hinge with the lubrication hole and click done so we're going to go select that bit of the uh, element to be partitioned we're going to say done and then it asks us we want to point a normal three points or normal to edge so point and normal the cutting plane passes through the selected point normal to the selected edge uh, three points uh, or three co th three non collinear points uh, the cutting plane passes through each point and an edge and a point along the edge cutting plane passes through the selected point normal to the selected edge in our case we're gonna go three points and we are going to select this point below and that point and that point so the cutting plane will pass through these three points so it's going to cut basically it's going to cut that flange in half and once we've done that we can say create partition and you see immediately it turns yellow which indicates no additional partitions are needed to cre create a hexahedral mesh and that's done we can just close this off and save our model now in the assembly well we now just to view our assembly and also just put that on so it actually zooms like that which is also quite nice and it shows the partition it shows now you can see it's actually uh, this bit is partitioned to be independent not independent but it's a separate piece of that hinge which is quite cool okay now we want to assign mesh controls so you can just go back to our hinge piece I'm gonna go to mesh I'm gonna go to mesh and say controls the region to define mesh controls is the whole bit and you say done and it pops up with what we want mesh so you can say as is and it also gives us the colors so you can be structured and sweep and hex hex dominated tet or wedge and we're going to select sweep and we're going to keep it as hex and then we can say medial axis algorithm with minimizing the mesh transition and because it gives us a tip as well to so certain cases minimizing the mesh transition will help to reduce the mesh distortion however the mesh may deviate further from the specified seeds okay so that's fine for our case and we're gonna say okay to assign them assign the mesh controls and now it's yellow because the whole part is now defined as a sweep mesh and we click done now we're going to do the next bit and mesh element type and we're going to select the whole bit again and now we can define what element type we want we're going to do element library standard and it's a linear geometric order and 3d stress is what we want to have a look at then we are we def assign the hex type which is fine and we want to use reduce integration as the element controls and that is pretty much it if you just scroll down here or maybe it would be best to just pull this down a bit so you can see what is on you know you can see all the different options with the first stiffness second order accuracy and right at the bottom it's it abacus names the well 
tells us which element type it's going to use an 8 node linear brick reduced integration hourglass control and that's pretty much what we want and we just say okay and now the mist controls has been assigned you can just say done now the last part is to seed it we want to seed the part an approximate size by default abacus uh, divides into 10 um, at least 10 elements so you can change it if you want but in this case we are going to try 0 0.004 and you're going to say uh, OK and Abacus asks if we are happy with it and we say yes we are happy with the way that was seed so now just to mesh the assembly we will well in this case we are going to do it um, by parts so going to just go to mesh and we're going to say part I also want to mesh it, say yes and then Abacus meshes it quite nicely you can see all the elements are there and now that is meshed and now we're going to do the same thing for the solid hinge we're going to go to mesh uh, we don't need to partition it further so we just go to mesh controls and select everything I'm going to do the sweep medial axis and minimize it and OK uh, select the regions, there's some mesh controls, we've already done that mesh element type uh, select this whole thing again, just say done just double check that everything is what we did thus far and you'll see it's the same um, element type that it's gonna m mesh this part with, and we're gonna say OK then next we're gonna seed it, we're gonna seed the part going to use a seed size of 004 as we did previously I'm going to say OK and it's seeded, click done and lastly we just say mesh part and we say yes and there it's meshed lastly we need to well that's pretty much it ok so now that our parts are meshed as we would want them to be meshed we can just click on assembly and say mesh to see the meshing of our assembly we're not going to mesh the pin because it's a rigid element so it doesn't need any um, specific meshing so the next step we're going to create and submit a job but first remember to save okay now scroll all the way down to job right click create a job we're going to call our job pool hinge and source is going to be our model and we're going to say continue description let's just call this hinge tutorial and submission uh, I'm not going to fiddle around with the settings just to give you an idea Uh, it gives you submission options, general options, you can print scratch history, output files, how to use memory and precision, parallelization and all those types of things. I'm not going to fiddle with that, I'm just going to click OK for now. So now our job is created, we can right click on it and say submit. Now while it's submitted we can right click and say monitor which displays what's actually happening on our job you can see the log appears and any warnings would pop up there five elements are distorted either isoparametric angles are suggested and yeah warnings are elements are distorted so five elements that's meshing elements that's probably around our hinge with the hole where the elements are slightly uh, distorted in our case it's okay for the purpose of this tutorial but if you have a very important model then you may want to consider different element types or a finer mesh or something that would make that a bit more um, manageable okay so this is all the stuff you can see I'm going to say dismiss so now the job has been completed 
So once the analysis is running, just the uh, XY part of the values of the degree of freedom that we selected to monitor uh, appears in a separate window in the viewport. Uh, viewport, create next. There we go. There is the degree of freedom that we monitored in the deg in the viewport pool hinge. So you want to move to different viewports. It shows you there is that viewport and there is the viewport of our model. So we can just switch to that and we can see our U1, which is the displacement in the X direction as time went on up until about 1. I think it's in seconds in this case. It jumped up and for second number 2 and by the second second where our analysis stopped. Yeah, something interesting to see. Okay, so now we can right click on our job and we can say results woohoo and there is the results of our well, analysis well this is, doesn't show any deformations as of yet we've just entered the um, results uh, options or the results view per se so now let's have a look at the uh, results so we can go to plot contours and we can select on deformed shape and you can see if we can rotate this around a bit that the pulling of the hinge on this end caused the pin to pull and some stresses develop around the pin where the contact areas are created you can see the highest stresses where the contact has been well where the contact is between the p the rigid pin and the this hinge piece, and I almost tell you the on the other opposite end, the higher stresses also higher stresses also develop. So that's quite cool, and you can also see the way this deflect as well. So you can cycle through the different views. There you can see it from the top where this flexes out. It's actually very cool to see. Maybe a good idea is also to remember to save. So just to explain this view a bit further, you can see Abacus tells you it's the which job it was, and it says that it's the load step at increment or increment six, which is our final step, um, well our final increment in this load step, and it also gives us the uh, deformation scale. If this text is too little for you and you can't see, you need to go to view. Or viewport, I think. Let's just have a look. Viewport annotations options, and you can say legend, and we should be that. You can say general. I think there's an option to try its size. Legend title block. Uh, view bounding box. Just say which we are. That's that. State block. And so, so that's the title block and the state block. We just want to make the text a bit bigger. You can say set font, make it 10, and we can change the font to whatever we want it to. Arial, for argument's sake. You can see it just makes it a bit bigger. So yeah, that's that bit. And just an uh, explanation why the pin is white. There's no results on the rigid pin. Because, well, we didn't ask for any, and it's a rigid element, so there's no real stresses that develops in that. Okay, so if you want to remove the white pin, we can expand our output database and also this output database file, and we can select the surfaces we want to remove. So you can just say pin, and we can just say replace, add, can remove that thing and then the pin is not visible in our display anymore which now makes it easier to see the higher stresses um, at those points in the hinges. If I want to bring it back you can just say add which brings the pin back to our view. Okay so next thing I want to show you guys is the how to reduce or increase the deformation factor so you can go to options common and then this pops up where you can 
go to deformation scale factor, uniform, uh, make it 2000 for example, and the deformations are a bit larger. It's fun if you want, well it's interesting or useful especially when you have small deformations and you need to emphasize the deformations a bit more to actually see what effect your uh, deformation has on your model. Okay, and that shows that. Okay. Also, by default, the uh, contour plot plots the Mises stress. We can change that a little bit if we go to Result Field Output. Currently, it shows us the Mises stress. We can um, select S11 and click Apply. Then it only shows S11, which is the normal stress in the one direction. And for the invariant option, we can select max principle so you can either go to uh, result or field output or you can just select from this drop down over here which is also quite useful so if you want a max principle or whatever stress you want to look at and then you can also change this if you wanted to if we go back to results, field output, click apply, S11, you can also say principal stresses, S11, okay, then Display groups is also quite useful. Let me just show you that quickly. So uh, you can only show one element of the hinge piece or the assembly to show that um, uh, on its own. So in the results tree, we can go to instances and we can turn instances uh, on and off. So you can go to, we literally want to keep that piece you can say uh, replace and that only shows the one so you can add it again or add the others again slowly but surely and then all the others are shown so if you only want to look at the one piece we can turn the others off so you can select the one with the hole and say replace so only that one is left and now we can rotate a bit and see this part on its own, which is quite useful. So if you want to fit it, you can always use fit. I want to just rotate it so you can see that the um, hole in the part also deformed to be become more of an oval shape, which is very interesting to see. So now we can go to result, field output, and then list only variables with results so you can see that's where uh, little results are so let's go to C press hmm which is strange I actually want contact pressure at surface node so let's just see why I don't have that now we can see how to do some debugging as well so I'm gonna go back to my model and in my viewport I want to go to the model and I want to see at where my contacts are where to find my contacts and also my field outputs just to make sure that they are correct so field output requests I'm gonna say edit uh, I want C stress which is clicked on which is nice now just where I said just to double check go edit C stress is contact stresses say okay and now I want to go to my interactions which is my contacts so I can say edit and it's node to surface which is correct that is quite strange I go back to results and I want to replace I want to just see my deformed one, don't want to show both and then we can go to result field output 
Oh, sorry, there is a C press result. Oh, sorry, I just missed it. Okay, so then that shows us where the highest the con the contact stresses are. So the blue ones is the f contact with the um, other hinge, and the inside is the contact with the pin. So yeah, that's also good reference if you don't get the results you want, which is normally <laughs> normal in Abacus. You can go back and just retrace your steps and see what settings uh, is not ticked or ticked or what might be missing. So a good place to start is whether you requested the output. If you find that it is checked, maybe just go and see where that output comes from or would be generated from and just double check that everything is okay. And this brings us to the end of our tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate your time. If you enjoyed the video, please um, like it and leave a comment below. I do enjoy reading your comments. And also, if you want to see more Abacus related videos, please subscribe to my channel. I will be getting back into the habit of making more videos for you guys. Thank you very much. Have a lovely afternoon. Bye-bye.